Dear students, welcome back to my YouTube channel MCB Chemistry. This is an online chemistry tutorial, and you get my previous videos either from my personal homepage or from my YouTube channel. And we were discussing about the topic chemistry of functional group one, and organic chemistry. And in this lecture, I would like to discuss with you very important reaction of haloalkane that is SN1 and reaction and SN2 reaction as mechanism, stereochemistry and effect of substrate on reaction rate. So first, uh, what is mean by nucleophilic substitution reaction? It is one of the most important reaction of haloalkane and it can lead to a wide variety of functional group. You can create many functional group out of these reactions from haloalkane. Started from haloalkane. So it is a reaction in which a nucleophile, that is this one, replaces living group and form substituted product. Okay, this is living group and this is live nucleophile. So a living group usually will be more electronegative than carbon. So carbon will be electrophilic center and any nucleophile having a shared pair of electron or neutral, it can attack this carbon and it form a substituted product like this. So the substrate of carbon usually undergo heterolytic bond cleavage and unshared pair electron from a base or nucleophile from a new bond with carbon and it form a substituted product. And in this slide I am giving many examples of uh, nucleophilic substitution reaction. Here this is uh, methyl bromide. Any nucleophile you can substitute and it form a corresponding product. And here you can see the variety of nucleophile can be used in this reaction and the product form is shown here. And the class of compound formed, uh, formed air, uh, alcohol, either thiol, sulfide, alkyne, nitrile, alkyl iodide, alkyl azide, and alkyl ammonium ion, alcohol either. So, uh, as I told you, a variety of class of molecule can be made out of this reaction. That is why this is a very important organ organ organic reaction. So, what, is, uh, what are the mechanism of nucleophilic substitution reaction? On the basis of experimental observation over a period of <coughs> seven years, two limiting mechanisms proposed for aliphatic nucleophilic substitution reaction that is SN1 and SN2. SN1 means substitution nucleophilic unimolecular, SN2 means substitution nucleophilic biomolecular. So, what is the fundamental difference between these two mechanisms? Actually, this is the time of bond breaking between carbon and living group. Okay, the time of bond break. At what time the carbon and living group is breaking? That is the one, one. And second one, time of bond forming between carbon and nucleophile. That is the second one. So, that is the difference between these two mechanisms. So, now, now, let us consider the first one, SN2, substitution, nucleophilic bimolecular reaction. Example is chloromethane, presence of a strong base at 60 degrees Celsius, you get alcohol. And the chemical kinetic studies reveal that this is a bimolecular reaction. What is mean by bimolecular? Is a reaction in which two species are involved in right deming step. So reaction rate, the, uh, the speed of reaction depends on two molecules, that is substrate and nucleophile, both substrate and nucleophile. So rate depends on the concentration of chloromethane and hydroxide ion. So that is called biomolecular that's in order reaction. So, uh, what is the mechanism of SN2 reaction? <clears throat> Here I have shown the, the scheme of mechanism. 
and one very important point is it is a single step process it give product through a transition state not through an intermediate so it involved transition state there is no intermediate that is the second point and it is a single step process means it is a concerted process concerted mechanism that is bond breaking and bond formation take place simultaneously same time so this is the substrate mean the bromide from a methane the presence of base what happens is the carbon is you know electrophilic because of its high electronegative atom this get positive charge so this negatively charged anion get attracted towards here so base or nucleophile uh, it attack the electrophilic center then it form this electrophilic center and it form a transition state and transition state there is an uh, you know simultaneously bond breaking and bond formation take place and here that is why it is shown in dash bond this bond is not formed and this bond is not uh, broken completely and this transition state is penta coordinated and oh it is uh, not formed and this is negatively charged and this is not left fully and this is also negatively charged and this one is you know uh, in same plane these three hydrogens are in same plane and uh, trigonal hybrid metal shape and the hybridization is sp2 these are the features of transition state and then it is started to form bond after here and slowly it uh, it leave this bromine and uh, will be broken and it take off as a br minus and it form a product like this okay so nucleophilic uh, nucleophile approaches carbon bearing living group from back side that is the most important point here in sn2 mechanism the back side attack take place so it's a very important point nucleophile approaches carbon bearing leaving group from back side it cannot approach through this side because bromine can block it's a large atom okay so the convenient place or space for attacking is back side okay so that is most important next one what is the stereochemistry of the center reaction uh, we are discussing next one walden inversion what is mean by walden inversion so this is the nucleophile orbit uh, you can see this uh, methyl bromide and bromine is large atom you can see here so the approach is uh, most uh, easiest way to attack this carbon is this uh, backside and this is the transition straight orbital and the, the overlap and you can see that uh, since it is attacking from the back side the conformation has been inversed in the product you can see this this all three are turning from here to the here you can see here so the conformation get inverted in the product and this was observed by walden and since it is called uh, observed by walden it's called walden inversion and it is exactly like an uh, you can consider this part as an umbrella and in storm wind in some cases an umbrella will be turned inside out like this you can see here this if you consider this as an umbrella and the understand we this is turn inside become outside out so this this is called walden inversion so the conformation of this molecule get inverted this is pointing towards to you if you are looking at this molecule you can see this is pointing away from you so it gets inverted so the product is 
you get inverted product. If you if you are taking a R configured molecule, you get the S configured product. So here yeah, you can see that. Okay. For right, one example, reaction of one bromobutane with sodium methoxide it give one methoxy butane. So this is the electrophile one bromobutane. And in presence of a nucleophile methoxide, uh, you get a transition straight like this. And the important point is uh, this compound, this configuration has been inverted here. You can see here, it is completely inverted. And the, if you are looking at this from here, this is towards you and it is away from you that is get inverted completely inverted and the next uh, nucleophilic substitution in hemolytic reaction is n1 and here if you are taking tertiary butyl bromate the presence of methanol a weak base and uh, you get corresponding product and actually this salt water just does not go through sn2 mechanism there are two reasons for that. SN2 reaction requires a strong base. This is strong nucleophile. This is weak nucleophile. And the SN2 require unhindered substrate. Unhindered because it is backside attack taking place. So if it is very hindered substrate, a very large molecule, it can hinder the approach of nucleophile. So here the methyl groups are, you know, uh, it can hinder the approach of nucleophile. So it does, uh, it cannot form a to mechanism. And methanol is a weak nucleophile and tertiary butyl is a hindered molecule. So it was observed that the chemical kinetic study revealed that rate of reaction depends on concentration of only the substrate that is tertiary butyl from it, not nucleophile. It doesn't matter if you have taken excess of nucleophile, does not uh, you know, speed up the reaction, does not increase the rate. Only if you increase the concentration of uh, from the substrate, reaction get increased, rate to get increased. So it's a phosphate reaction and a unimolecular reaction in which only one species is involved in the rate determination. So, it's a unimolecular, unimolecular nucleophilic substitution reaction. So, what is the mechanism? SN1 mechanism is different from SN2. It is a two-step process and it involved an intermediate. Okay, in previous case, it was transition straight. And first step is the ionization of carbon leaving group to form carbocation intermediate like this. You are taking tertiary butyl bromide. First step, it is a slowest step and rate determining step and slow ionization of bromine take place and it form a carbocation intermediate. This is planar and the speed to hybridized trigonal planar and we form Br minus a living group. Okay. Then second step is nucleophile attack on this electrophile carbocation. So you have this is electrophile carbocation. It can attack from the back side of this carbocation. Nucleophile can attack a back side like a central reaction. So if it attack from the back side you get an inverted product that we already understood, learned from a center. And it forms an oxonium ion. And this is the electrophilic center. This lone pair can attack this carbon and it forms an inverted product. And you have an H plus here and this has to leave. At the same time, the same carbocation, this is same one, it can attack also from the French side and you get a product that is uh, having same configuration of shared material.
so you are started with this substrate you have if the attack is from the front side the configuration will be same as stratomedically okay so in second case you get this one and this step is very fast it's very fast you can see it here and uh, this time uh, in second step you have you have to take the proton away this is uh, oxonium and this job is done by uh, weak nucleophile and it removes proton and form corresponding alcohol that mechanism is uh, uh, all is okay now now you got the product and in this case sn1 reaction in this is the intermediate and in second step nucleophile attack can take place from the both from back side and front side why it is happening because this is there is no hindrance it can equally pro, equal probability is there to attack from both side there is no hindrance to attack from the front in sn2 it was bromine was there it can prevent the attack but here the already the bromine is gone and intermediate is formed okay so there, there is a equal probability to attack from front side and from back side and you get if it is attacking from the front you get the retention of configuration if attack take place from back side inversion of configuration take place so in uh, stereochemistry you can see if you start started with s3 bromo 3 methyl hexane it's an optically active compound and if if you react with the this pressure halide with the water a weak nucleophile you get two product you get s conformer and uh, isomer and r isomer a racemic mixture and there will be an equal 50 50 percentage and equal uh, amount of s and r isomer okay so reason you we already discussed right it's proceed through an uh, a formation of intermediate carbocation and because of its fragonal planar configuration is chiral and it react with the water at equal rate from either side and to form uh, an isomer in equal amount in retention having one having retention of configuration and another having inversion of configuration and uh, third point that we already learned mechanism next one uh, factors affecting the reaction rate the question we should ask to us is why chloromethane react by sn2 and tertiary butyl chlorine react reacts by sn1 there are th there are many number of, uh, or number of factors or variable that affect and affect the reaction rate one is structure of substrate another one is concentration or reactivity of nucleophile and third one is effect of solvent and uh, fourth one is nature of leaving group these are the variables and we are learning in this lecture only the sub structure of substrate how this structure of substrate uh, uh, affect the reaction rate the rate of sn1 reaction are governed by stability of intermediate because in rate determining step is the formation of intermediate so the the rate then depends on the stability how stable is the carbocation whereas sn sn2 reactions are governed by steric factor or steric interest because it is uh, the first step is the backside attack and uh, uh, how is it possible to attack backside that is important so let us consider the sn1 first so we are considering stability of carbocation we already learned that in previous lecture carbocation stability order is like this tertiary is more stable than secondary which is more stable than primary which is more stable than methyl carbocation there are many electronic factors for the carbocation stability one is inductive effect because of inductive effect tertiary is more stable 
And another one is hyperconjugate effect, the reason for stability. So, a seven-point reactivity order in alkyl halide or alkyl carbocation is first or is more stable than secondary, which is more stable than primary, which is more stable than methyl halide. So, highly substituted carbocations are highly stable. This can be explained based on these two electron factor. And another factor is the resonance factor. For example, in the case of allyl bromide. Allyl bromide undergoes a one reaction, prime whether it is whether it is primary allylic or benzylic allyl. Because this primary, even though it is primary, this carbocation is highly stable. This intermediate is highly stable because this is resonance stabilized. You can see this is the resonance structure of uh, allyl carbocation. This is called allyl carbocation. Allyl means the, uh, uh, the alpha carbon of a double bond having halogen. Okay, that is allylic bromide. And this can undergo SN1 mechanism. Similarly, benzyl halide. Benzyl means uh, the, the, there is a CH2 group attached to a benzene ring. That is benzene. And this benzene, even though it is a primary, it is it can undergo SN1 mechanism. Reason is the intermediate benzene is highly stable. Why? Because this benzene carbocation is resonance stabilized. So that is the reason. And how about the vinyl and aryl halide? It does not undergo either SN1 or SN2 reaction. Do you know this is vinyl halide? Vinyl halogen attached to a double bond and aryl halide halogen attached to a benzene. What is the reason? It does not undergo SN1 because the vinylic carbocation is highly unstable. You cannot form a positive charge on double bond. Here, double bond positive charge intermediate will not be formed. That is the SN1 reaction with carbon carbocation intermediate is less stable. How about the SN2? Backside attack is not possible because it is having high electron density. So it can hinder the backside attack. And you cannot, uh, you know, this have a very high electron density above and below the plane of ring. So backside attack is not possible. That is why SN does not undergo either SN1 or SN2 range. Then order of stability of carbocation, you can tell like that most stable or most reactive or most uh, having very good rate is tertiary allylic and tertiary benzylic and uh, then tertiary alkyl and secondary allylic and secondary benzylic and uh, secondary alkyl and primary allylic and uh, primary benzylic this is having similar one and then primary alkyl and methyl this is less reactive the more reactive is tertiary. Okay, this is increasing stability of carbocation. That is the point we have to take up, take in account. How about uh, next SN2? Uh, uh, how this structure of substrate affect the uh, uh, SN2 reaction rate? When you have this, uh, this case, in this case, sterling effect is we are considering. And uh, due to bulky group, it can hinder the approach of nucleophile to the reactive center. That is in methyl halide, it is very easy to approach this nucleophile to this carbon atom. When you have a methyl group, there is a little bit hindrance. That is why reaction rate get decreased here. Suppose it is 30 it become drastically decrease the reaction rate. When you considering secondary, again the reaction rate get decreased. Why? You have a very big bulky group with the bulky group here and the approach of nucleophile get hindered. And if you have a neopendyl case, that is a very big bulky group is here, the nucleophile approach is also again hindered. And if you have a 3-methyl group, that is tertiary, it can 
attack this carbon, this electrophilic center, through the backside. So, just exactly opposite reaction rate is methyl is more reactive than primary, which is more reactive than secondary, which is more reactive. It is unreactive in tertiary, you can see here, unreactive. So, what is like this? The SN2 case tertiary is more reactive because carbocation stability is high for tertiary and with then secondary like this, but in SN2 just reverse and uh, this one is more reactive, okay, methyl and then primary then secondary. It access to the site of reaction is in this order. And you can see here methyl and primary halide, it react only by SN2, not by SN1. Uh, then tertiary, it reacts only by SN1, not by SN2. But the secondary, it can react either by SN1 or SN2. And in summary, uh, what we have learned today is SN1 reaction is a bond breaking and bond formation is not considered, but in SN2 it is considered process. It takes place simultaneously. And SN1 is a unimolecular reaction, SN2 is bimolecular and it, uh, SN1 involves two steps, it involves only one step and there is an intermediate, there is carbocation in SN1, there is no intermediate in SN2 but there is a transition step. And uh, resumization takes place in SN1 and Walden inversion takes place in SN2. Then another factor uh, we have learned here is the fa fa factors favoring SN1 versus SN2 reaction, the, the substrate factor. In SN1 case, tertiary is more reactive than secondary, which is more reactive than primary, but in SN2, methyl is more reactive than primary, which is more reactive than secondary. Okay, thank you uh, for watching. That's all.